Hey guys, welcome back to the Whimsical Workshop. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to make our pretty in pink quilt featuring the brand new dye from AccuQuilt. Uh, this is a free pattern that will be up here on the AccuQuilt uh, website, but I'm going to show you how to make our sweet and adorable flamingo quilt. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Whimsical Workshop. In this video, I'm going to be working on our flamingo quilt featuring the new flamingo dye from AccuQuilt. I'm gonna show you how to do the applique with the flamingo facing left and facing right using the same dye. And we're gonna go over some of the other elements in the quilt. So let's get started. All right, so we have all our pieces cut using the dies for the one and a half inch squares. This one didn't have a die, it's a one and a half by two and a half. Um, so I just cut two and a half inch strips using a die and then cut them into segments. I've got all of my quarter square triangles together, my borders, and then the flamingo backgrounds. So the only thing left to cut are the flamingos for the quilt. And so here is the picture of the quilt and we have one, two, three, four, five flamingos that are facing to the left and we have four that are facing to the right and this is our die. So a way to do this, I've got all of my pieces pre-cut to a size bigger than the shape and I did that by literally just taking a ruler and laying it on top of my die and adding some excess around it to know how big to cut these. I put fusible web on the back for today's project. I'm using Hot Fix, which is a permanent adhesive, but it works great in the die cutters and if you use a Cricut cutter with SVG files or just standard, um, just fusible, just to use it for a fusible applique project. It is permanent, so once it's down, it's down. So you do have to be careful when you're setting things down to make sure that they're where you want them before you iron them. But I have really enjoyed using Hot Fix. Um, and I will put a link below. We, we enjoy it so much that it's the first fusible that I am selling on our website, thewhimsicalworkshop.com. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a pen here and I'm going to separate these into five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And that should leave me one. Can't count tonight. One, two, three, four, five. So there's five and there's four. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna do that for everything. Okay, so now I know all of these are fabric facing up on the die. And that will give me the flamingos that are facing to the left. And then these, the fabric is going to face down and that will give me the flamingos that face to the right. So keep these two paths separate. I cut everything from one direction the first time and then I will go ahead and cut the other side. It will save us from making mistakes. So I even have a spanking new cutting mat here to use. So that fits on there. And we're going to go ahead and layer up. You can cut up to six layers. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut the flamingos on their own. And then I'll do the wings and the beak and the eye at the same time. So we only have to run it through twice to get everything. And I'm making sure there's fusible at the edges of all of these. And this says fabric side up. So I'm going to lay it on there. I flip it up to make sure that he is all of the sizes or covers the whole die shape. Yeah, I think we're good. Put our cutting mat on there. And there are our flamingos. So we're just going to pull this off. Now I cut the beaks and the wing, but we don't need those because those are different colors. So we're just gonna work this out. Um, it didn't cut all the way through probably because I did uh, five layers with fusible. So we're going to pick up these where it did cut through. All right, so we're gonna pull up these guys. There are our flamingos facing to the left. So note to self, don't do five layers. 
And like I said, the, the cutter will cut six to eight layers without fusible, but if you're using a really thick fusible, it will not go through. So we're gonna split these into three and two. And again, fabric side up. I can do those wings together and the beak and eye together. There we go. That's how it's supposed to work. So there's his wing. And his beaks. And the itty bitty bitty eyes. You can see by doing it all going in the same direction, you only have to remember one thing right now, which is fabric up. All right, so now we're on to this guy. These are the right facing ones. So we're going to put them fabric side down. All right, so there are our other ones. And that, these are all just scrap pieces. And that is how you die cut the flamingo, both right and left facing ones, by doing half of them with the fabric facing up and half of the fabric facing down. So now we have all our pieces ready to start assembling our flamingo quilt. So we are now cut and all our applique pieces are cut and we've removed all the paper from the backing. Uh, so now we're ready to tackle the quilt itself. And so sometimes when you look at a quilt like this, we've got applique, we've got flip and sew, we've got flying geese, we've got quarter square triangles, we've got piece sashing and then borders. And it maybe feel a little overwhelming as to how do I tackle this project. So I'm going to go through the steps that I would do. So, um, and that may help you decide how you want to tackle it. The first thing I would do once everything is cut is I would get the bird's applique down on the background. There's a lot of tiny pieces, we don't want to lose them, um, and you need to do the stitching on the blocks before you can assemble them anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything pressed, um, and then I'll probably do the decorative stitching on the birds. Then I will go ahead and do the flying geese, then I'll do the quarter square triangles, and then I'll come back and start assembling the blocks and the sashing. So that's kind of how I break it down. Uh, start with the smallest part and go up. And so we're ready to build our, um, our flying geese. We're ready to build our flamingos. So to do that, we need to find the center point of each of these rectangles, these background rectangles. So I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise and I'm going to press it. And I'm going to open it up. We don't need to do a center line because these guys should fill yeah, they fill most of the block. Now you want to remember to leave at least a quarter inch at the top and at the bottom because that's your seam allowance. And I'm actually going to use his little leg right here on the fold line. I mean, that's perfect. We don't even have to, you know, guess at it. So then each flamingo gets a beak. And again, this is permanent. I'm using hot fix, which is a permanent adhesive. So I'm actually going to start pressing one step at a time. So things don't shift on me because um, once it's down, it is, you can get it up if you really struggle at it, but it's it's not easy. So you want to make sure you have everything where you want it. Um, but that is the, the difference between a permanent adhesive that you don't have to stitch down and a temporary one that will pop up as you sew. So there are pluses and minuses to everything. And then we've got his wing. And I'm just looking at the picture and I'm going to put it right about there. And then last is his eye. Now the eye is really tiny, so I'm going to use a straight pin. And I'm going to push the straight pin through the eye like that. And then I'm going to position it where I think you should go. And I'm going to hold it with the straight pin and touch it with the iron and then lift my straight pin. And that is a nice, easy way to position a tiny piece like that. So he is all done. So that is the right facing flamingo. All right, so there is my left facing flamingo and my right facing flamingo. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these built up and then we'll move on to the next step.
Okay, so we have all our flamingos ready to stitch. I am going to definitely do the black and black, and then I'm going to pick a pink. So these are all colors. And let's see if I have one that will work. I'm going to go with, I think, this one first. But what we're going to do is you just take the colors, bring out one thread, and lay it over the whole piece. And that will tell you what it'll look like on both the light pink and the dark pink. And it really depends on how much you want it to pop. So I could do the light and it would pop on the wing but disappear into the flamingo. So I'm going to skip on that. And this one is too red, uh, watermelony, so that's a definite no. There's too much blue in it. So that leads me to this hot pink, which would disappear pretty much in the wing, but outline the bird, or this raspberry, which would just sort of disappear into everything. And I think flamingos are flashy birds, so we're going to go with the hot pink. And this is also a 40 weight, so it's going to be much more prominent than the 50 weight threads. So that guy will do the wing and the bird, and like I said, I'll do black there. So we will get these stitched. I will show you that when we get over to the sewing machine, and we'll have our flamingo blocks done. All right, now that we are getting ready, we are piecing all of the triangles, flying geese, and the flip and sew on the fl um, flamingo blocks. I want to walk you through those block units. So this is the quarter square triangle, and you're going to sew these. When you sew these, you're going to make sure that you have the same color on top for both sides. So don't do, don't sew it like this because they won't match up. So everything goes through with the same color and then you press towards the same color. So you end up with two units like this. Then you turn this around and there's your quarter square triangle and your seams will align and you can just go ahead and sew it, which is here. Now for the video, they didn't have the um, die to do the quarter square triangles. So in my case, I do have these little dog ears that I do need to clip off. Um, I do believe if you're using the AccuQuilt die, that takes care of it and you don't have to worry about it. So you have to make a lot of these. <laughs> so once you get all of these made, you're going to sew them into your sashing rows. Uh, you have uh, the top and bottom ones, you have four units, and the side ones have five units. And they're going to get sewn, the top and bottom ones will get sewn into a sashing row. I'll show you when I get closer, but we're going to use these as the cornerstones. So that is the outside. Well, this is the sashing in the box. So then, I'm going to make some flying geese. So to do that, you place a uh, square on the rectangle, because these are small enough, there is not a die to do this. So you need to do this the traditional method, which is you take the square, and you take a fabric pencil and you just draw a line from corner to corner. Um, I have a video of four different ways to do flying geese. I will put it below. This is the most traditional way. Um, you're just going to draw a line from corner to corner, place it on your rectangle, and sew from point to point, which we've done here, and then you press it open. Um, and then once you know everything's aligned, you're going to cut away the excess fabric and there is your flying case unit. So you need to do um, those for the block frames. And once you get the flying geese done, then you're going to sew them together like this uh, with a green square, which I don't have cut. I'll have to cut some green squares. And that will make the frame to go around your flamingo block. Now the flamingo block, you need to repeat that flip and sew method on the four corners of the block. And then you trim away the excess and press this out. And that will give you the flamingo block. 
So I found my missing green pieces because I have this the wrong way. This should go this way. These are my corner pieces, so I've had to cut new corner pieces. And these are supposed to be this color. So now I need to take all of these off and put these on. Um, so, because I'm going to do that, I'm going to show you my Zippy Ripper. We do have these on the website. I'll put a link below. This is how I rip out all of my seams because it's quick and easy and goes very, very fast. Um, it is going to make a buzzy noise, so I will probably turn that part of the volume down. But this is how you do it. You put your hand on the bottom piece. You gently pull the top piece up. And when I say pull, I mean you're just holding it up so you can see the threads. You turn this guy on and you're going to run it through the threads and then you'll see how fast it cuts the thread. And that is the best and easiest way to pull off pieces that, or pull apart pieces that you need to pull apart. Um, I like this head because it's much smaller than the wide short versions. The ergonomics on this is much, much nicer and you're less likely to press into the fabric and rip it. So this is the Zippy Ripper and I'm going to now need to rip all of these corners off and you're, gonna, you're saying, well, what are you going to do because you've already cut off the background. What you do is I'm going to align the top edge with the square and the side edge with the square. It's only a quarter inch of fabric there for me to align with, um, but then I can sew from point to point and they may not be perfect, but they will be good enough for this project and um, I can move forward without having to redo the entire, um, I keep wanting to call these guys geese, flamingo block. So once I get all of these fixed, I will be back to show you how to put the blocks together. So happy ripping. All right, now we're back on track. These are the right color. That is what the border should look like. This is what the sashing will look like. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the decorative stitching on here. Now I used Hot Fix, which is a permanent adhesive, so I probably wouldn't even need to stitch this, but aesthetically I like the way it looks, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so we have our little flamingo blocks all finished and stitched. So next up is we need to, this is the sashing, so we're going to move that out of the way. We need to sew these on either end of these because you're going to put another one down here for the bottom. And we need to sew these to the flamingo box. So I'm going to go ahead and get the blocks sewn together and then we'll be ready to start adding the sashing. We have all our flamingo blocks done. We have our right facing ones and our left facing ones. And now we're ready to start putting these together into rows. So. The top row is the sashing row. So we are going to sew one, two, three, four rows of sashing. So it's square, sashing, square, sashing. Make sure you're using the one, two, three, four block sashing and not the five block. And then the block rows, you're going to put these on either side of the blocks. And then we've got this guy this guy, and that guy. So, and then um, the rows vary. So this one and the bottom row are the same, and then in the middle they face a different way. So when you're sewing it together, just make sure these guys are going the way you want them to. And also, if you do your sashing rows first, don't pick up the five block sashing. Make sure you're using the four block sashing for those rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the quilt top sewn together, and I'll show it to you when it's all done. Here is the Pretty in Pink quilt back from Monica Chrome. She quilted this. This is using the AccuQuilt dye, the Flamingo. And I'm just gonna zoom in here so you can see the beautiful quilting job on this. I hope you have enjoyed this video using the new Flamingo dye from AccuQuilt. You can get the Pretty in Pink pattern as a free download from their website and if you've enjoyed the video make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell to be notified every time we do a new video and i thank you for watching